back, everybody, March 10th, 2024, and there is no shortage of things to talk about, and one of those things having just taken place, a large eruption from the sun, which we are very lucky to not have facing our direction right now. The strength of this eruption would no doubt have caused a large solar storm that would have had numerous effects on the Earth, including those internet and cell phone outages we've been experiencing on different occasions by different situations. Now, to explain this a little better and a little more quickly, we're going to use a program called Solar System scope.com and basically it's a replica of the solar system that you can play with and move into the future and the past to see where planets are lined up or things like we're doing right now so in this case with this specific solar flare the reason we're lucky is because the solar flare took place on the upper left side of the sun as our orientation sits so when you're looking at the SDO satellite this is the view you're seeing the earth facing the sun so any sort of eruptions that come off the equator of the sun towards the earth are the most dangerous the one we just had took place on the upper left limb, almost shooting off this back end of the sun in the top left quadrant, which in this case is going to affect the planets like Mercury in a severe way, and then in turn Jupiter, as the wave of energy shoots out in this direction and not in the direction of the Earth. So really, this is a good learning experience to see just how close we can be at any given moment from our sun really doing some serious damage to our existence. We're talking just about 12 hours later, and this eruption could have been directly facing Earth. Very quickly, I just want to give you the scale of the size of this eruption compared to the size of the Earth. Now, let's zoom in here real quick, and you get an idea of just how massive these eruptions are. We are talking hundreds of thousands of kilometers from end to end coming off the surface of the sun and then we have earth right here as a comparison this isn't where the earth sits it's just there to give you an idea of the size of these eruptions this was only an m class flare this didn't reach x class status so now for those of you that don't follow the sun as closely you have a much better idea of why these eruptions when they're facing earth are so very important and being able to have that little bit of extra time to prepare or know it's coming could be something that makes all the difference now naturally if you follow this channel we associate this sun activity with earthquakes we've seen it time and time again when that stress on the earth begins we also begin to see a very large uptick in the amount of earthquakes and the size of them that we get now believe it or not you are looking at just the last 48 hours of reported earthquakes that doesn't mean that each and every one of these was a verified earthquake but each one of these you see is either one person or multiple people some of these end up being meteor explosions or sonic booms but the fact that we're seeing all these different reports just in the last two days is telling me that the ground underneath our feet is beginning to change and move. Also, you get used to looking for patterns, specifically here in the United States. If you look at a set of earthquakes like this right here, these four in Texas, they're almost in an arc type line with equal distance in between each earthquake. And when I saw that, I couldn't help but think of this, a short video we put out a while back now where we saw this similar arc up in the Northeast. And many people believe that this was some sort of tunnel being dug. Take a listen to this. So back on January 6th, 17th, I noticed a very rare earthquake pattern that had taken place over one day and eight hours. Almost like a crescent moon reaching from southwestern PA and then a half circle making its way down the eastern side of the United States, basically hitting every state on the way. Now, they all didn't take place in a row, but basically four out of the seven quakes you see that make this circle all happen within a three-hour period. The other three were about 24 hours sooner, but were also in rapid succession. Now, this particular website, Volcano Discovery, is where people can come on and report shaking. So not all of these are confirmed earthquakes, but multiple people in each of these situations reported the shaking. Now, an interesting comment was brought up by a friend of mine, and I want you to think about this. What if they are possibly building some sort of tunnel and had to take this route in order to have stable ground rather than building a straight line tunnel? Just a possible theory? Tell me your thoughts. What do you think is going on here? All right, so there you have it. A very similar situation. Now, these have happened countless times, and it's impossible to show them all, but when they pop up and I see them, I like to report on them. So yes, within all this mess here, we are focusing on these Texas earthquakes, but don't forget the overall point here, and that is that there is an uptick in earthquakes, not just in Texas, but the entire North American continent as a whole. And it's only just a matter of time before more and more people start noticing. All right, my friends, that is the information I have for you for now. Don't forget to check out the X and Instagram pages for more information on all sorts of topics. And don't forget to share this video. I appreciate each and every one of you. Shout out to Canada, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Stop right
right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.